you smell something good on the stove, something cooking, your day just got better. Right now, fresh takes on Italian food that's easy to make at home. You're not shy with the garlic. No, no, I'm not shy at all. Hi again, everyone. I'm Tim Laird along with Kevin Harnett. And Tim, we are grateful to be here at Paris Town at our kitchen theater filled with an awesome studio audience where we're welcoming one of Kentucky's best Italian chefs. Cooking is an art. Alan Hubbard is with us, and you're about to see why all who know him call him smooth. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. He's smooth, all right, and he has a lot of secrets to share with us that you can use in your own kitchen. Amazing Italian flavors right now on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs here in Paris Town. I'm Kevin Harnett alongside my broadcast partner, Tim Laird. That's right, Kevin, and I'll tell you what, it's a great day to be in kitchen theater, especially if you like Italian food. And who doesn't? Check out this dish. It's called Chicken Fresca, a specialty at Martini Italian Bistro in Louisville, where you'll find all your favorites from lasagnas to parmigianas to piccatas. Chef Alan Hubbard runs the kitchen at Martini, and today he's going to share the secrets to that chicken fresca along with his raspberry cream cake. Are you hungry? It's easy to make at home when you learn the secrets. All righty then, let's get cooking. Here he is, Chef Alan Hubbard from Martini's Italian Bistro. Hey, what's up, what's up, what's up? Hey, hey, thank you everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We really, really appreciate you so much for coming out today. We do, do, and we appreciate you coming hey, out hey, today. Hey, I'm nothing without y'all. You're so, always thank with you everybody. Sh share your secrets, and yes. we love that on this show. I love it it happens to be the name of it. Yeah, and I try to do it, you know, to empower people, let you know cooking is, could be fun. And don't be intimidated. Be willing to try something new. Step outside the box. Today we're going to do a chicken fresco. Nice way to say fresh chicken. We're just going to take some chicken, sauteed with uh, broccolini, cherry tomatoes, shallots, and garlic. We're going to put it on the bed of angel hair pasta. And what we've got right here, we're going to start off with, I got like three ounces of chicken breast. We lightly pounded. it. They pound it out and make it real thin. And they put up this really pretty word. It's called scallopini. A lot of people get a tip like, oh my God, what's a scallopini? Scallopini is a nice way to say something, a piece of meat, lightly pounded, thin. We're going to put this in. And then the most important thing I can tell anybody when you're cooking, season your food. A little salt and pepper. There you go. And we almost oh, there. You can see good. you can see on the edges right here. It's starting to this it's, it's starting to crisp up a little bit. We are almost ready to turn. And remember just take a little patience. You don't have to flip it and flip it and flip it. Let it sit for a minute. Let it get a little sear on it. A little skin, like like to call it. A little skin that way it seals in the flavor. Imagine like the chicken is open. But once you put in that skillet, the flavor you cut the flavor off, so everything stays inside. So when you when you cook it, every, all the flavors inside, and you cut it, it stays there. Leave it alone. In other yeah, words, you, you, yeah. Have Let patience. It have patience. Let's talk about how you got to where you are. Wow, me. Uh, born and raised in Kentucky. Uh, graduated Dupont Manual, class of '86. So I, I thought I wanted to travel the world. Actually, I did want to travel the world. So I joined the Marine Corps. You know, I, my mom. I'll never forget my mom. I wanted to be an Army boy. My mom said, "You yeah, are." You'll never make an army. I'm like, Mama went to the Marine Corps. You'll never make, you should go to the army. I'm like, well, Mom, yeah, well, thank you, Mama. You know what I'm saying? So I went to the Marine Corps, and I never forget it was one time there during our uh, physical training, I was fat guy. So in the Marine Corps, fat guys, we don't do well. So they said, if you don't get your stuff together, boy, you out of here. I like, ain't no way in the world I'm going home and tell my mama that I couldn't make it. I mean, y'all gonna have to kill me. <laughs> like, and so I made it through the Marine Corps. I spent six years there. I got to travel the world. I've been all throughout the Western Pacific, from uh, Hawaii all the way to uh, Malaysia, quite a few places, and I came out, and uh, I still, I, I love to cook. I cook for the Marine Corps. Then I got a job down to Vincenzo's, uh, worked with Agostino and, and Vincenzo. I worked there for like 13 years, and uh, I still love it. I went to the Presbyterian Seminary, had a little stick there, but the seminary was, as much as I loved the job, it was too easy. I go to work at eight, I got off at three. I'm like, what am I gonna do? So I went, I like, I was bored. I like, you know what I'm saying? I had to get a new job. You know, so I got a new job. I went to Martini Italian Bistro and I've been there for like 30 years. So now I got my little 10, 11 hour days like I like. 
you know, where I get to live in the kitchen. I, I feel like when I wake up, I know I have to work. I'm old school like that. You know, there ain't nothing laying in bed. Get up, go to work, go get that money. And that's what I do. Nice. We could use a little of that in the world today, right? We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to finish up the dish right here with Smooth from hey, Martini hey. Italian hey. Bistro. Stay with us. You're watching Secrets of Bluegrass Chef. Welcome back to Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. We're cooking Italian with the one and only smooth Chef Alan Hubbard from Martini's Italian Bistro. Right. And I see you flipped the chicken. We're about ready to plate yeah. up. And then we're going to add in our shallots, which I love. You know, shallot is like a, a mild uh, red onion. It's got a lot of flavor, a lot of flavor. And then we're going to add in my friend, my, my love, garlic. A little garlic. garlic yeah, yeah. You're not shy with the garlic. No, no, I'm not shy at all. No. We're going to add a little garlic in there, and then we're going to add in the rest of it. We got our broccolini, this Italian broccoli. Got a little extra crunch to me, the regular broccoli. It holds up well, and it, it, it got that little extra crunch. To me, uh, regular broccoli, well, you can cook it light, but it just don't have the flavor. It seems like a little watered down, in a sense, to me. And so many people eat with their eyes. That adds a nice color to it. Oh, yes. And that's what we want. We, we, we came up with this dish, and uh, we just wanted something different, something we could call our own, and uh, something that we can give back. You know, we try to change up the menu uh, every year, twice a year, you know, add like five new items. Some things we cannot change because people get mad. They come back, <laughs> you know, say, where's my Rosa? I want, it's not on the menu. So like, hey, hey, relax, relax, baby, relax. We cook our food, meaning that if you want a Rosa, we'll cook your Rosa. It's not on the menu. If we got the ingredients, we're going to make it. <laughs> and see how we got it? Um, a color coming in. And why we got that? We're going to take our uh, angel hair. We're going to warm it up a little bit. Again, a little oil. A little oil. You got a little angel hair pasta. And uh, see, on this angel hair, we're just going to warm it up. And don't think that we're done with this. We just blanched it off. It's a nice way to say pre cook. We uh, cook the pasta, cook whatever, and then you shock it uh, with the ice water or whatever. But we use just regular cold water. Shock it so you want to stop the cooking process, and then we bring it back, bring it back to life. And we're almost ready, y'all. Just quick. Nice. Yeah. Well, we're glad we're almost ready. We're getting hungry, aren't we? Hey, hey, we got you. We got you. There you go. Give it just another second. It's looking good. Yeah. It's smelling good, too. Oh, it smells great. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, and I'll tell you what, this is a colorful dish, too. I love oh, it. everything beautiful. that's going on. It's beautiful. Now, Tim is eyeing the food, but most of the time when we are at Martini's, is. uh, we, we go on occasion. Um, it's it's the martinis that yes. Tim really likes. I love quite, the martinis. There's quite a collection of those. It's yes. like it's like 30 different martinis, and uh, you've got a great happy hour. I love it. I'll tell you what, it's a fun place. It, it is fun. And I always say, how can you come to martinis and not have a martini? <laughs> now, I, yeah, the name's like Martini Italian Bistro. Martini, and I love my martinis. I, I've never gone to martinis without having, um, a, well, yeah. I, I haven't had a martini. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why well, I like I'm the martini. Not that's, that's okay, that's How okay. Many martinis I've had at martinis. There you go. And you see, we got, finally got the little color that I was looking for. There it is. You know what I'm saying? You want, that, you want just a little bit of color, but that color is, is, is caramelization. And the caramelization has that little extra flavor, that, that nice way to say umani. Which is a nice way to say extra flavor. So we're gonna get that like that, and we're gonna just take and plate this over here. Put the chicken like this, like this. Oh, Beautiful. Oh yeah, it's looking good, smelling good. Oh, that garlic comes out. Yeah. And those shallots are cooked just perfectly. Yeah, you want them just like a little, little, little crispy on the edges. Looking good, smelling good. There's only one thing left. There you go. We're gonna add a little. Mozzarella, and this is good. Like when you're sitting outside, al fresco, and uh, you can really enjoy it. And we're going to take a little the balsamic, balsamic vinegar, reduced until it kind of like coats the back of a spoon. And then we're going to top it off with a little just fresh basil to add a little extra freshness. And just like that, y'all, we have a chicken fresca. Chicken fresca from Martini. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wowza. That looks delicious. 
We're going to have a chance to taste that coming up. And you're not finished sharing your secrets. A no. nice dessert? Yeah, we got a, a dessert coming up. I'm doing a raspberry cream cake. A raspberry cream cake. Uh, Stay with us. You're watching Secrets of Bluegrass Chef. All right, all right. Welcome back to Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. I'm Tim Laird along with uh, Kevin Harnett, and it's cocktail time with a reveal this time. Yeah, and this is your favorite part of the show, I know, Tim. And today we're showcasing a very unique bourbon. You're going to have the chance to hear more about that from a man none other than one of the people behind the revitalization here at Paris Town, Steve Smith. Steve, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Well, Great thank to be you. Here. We love Paris Town. Let's right. start with that. Wow. I mean, it's our new home for kitchen theater. It is an amazing place to be. In a nutshell, how do you explain it to people at home? Well, I, you know, it's an historic neighborhood. It, the, it was founded actually 1854, and uh, there's a dozen partners that, that I had glasses of bourbon with and suckered them into helping me and uh, with you know, help from Christy Brown and lots of people. Uh, you know, this is just a great place to be. So we're excited. We're in the heart, you know, right outside the heart of Louisville. And uh, we hope you, everybody will come down, enjoy the cafe, see the new Stoneware and Company retail showroom, and uh, have fun. It really is a fantastic place. Out, outdoor, uh, I mean, theater where you can watch movies, uh, concerts over we here. We listen I to mean, bands uh, out it, here. It's a lot of fun. Lots to offer. And now, something new and special, Steve. Yeah. There's a little history going on. We're releasing a new bourbon called Bougie's. Uncle Bougie. Um, and so, you know, my family is, came to Kentucky in 1774 with the founding of Harrodsburg. And we've been making untaxed whiskey, as we like to call it, for <laughs> 250 years. Um, and so, you know, we talked to Uncle Bougie and we decided to uh, release some, as we call it, legit bourbon. And uh, so this is part of the family stock. It's 13 years old. Uh, we've got a barrel proof and we've got a single barrel. There's only going to be 600 jugs available uh, with this for first release. And then uh, and it's available at Stoneware and Company exclusively. You can also taste it at the cafe bar. You know, I, I, you, you get all five senses when you're tasting. And I'll tell you what, nose, sight, smell. So we're only getting 125 jugs out of that barrel. Wow. Oh, wow. Isn't that great? Oh, my gosh. So smooth. And you know what? What's great about this is, you know, there, there's a thing with the taste that you it, it lingers. And it's a beautiful, I'm telling a you great what, finish. I mean, all of a sudden, vanilla notes just right. smack me right in the face. I mean, it's boom. Well, that's one of the three that are in the uh, nice packaging you have. Speaking of your Uncle Bougie, I grew up next to him, uh, so no, I know uh, the guy. Yeah, uh, you, you, so Bougie is legendary. And uh, so this release is called Buzzard's Roost. And the, the family um, operations have been nicely hidden for almost over 200 years in Buzzard's Roost. So, uh, you know, we, we nobody goes there. You're not allowed to go, you know, nobody talks to Bougie. And, uh, but I'm out here telling you that this is the greatest whiskey ever made. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that was phenomenal. Let us say a big thank you to Steve thank Smith, you. Paris Town, Uncle Bougie's Bourbon. You'll find it right here at Stoneware and Company. We're going to take a quick break. More secrets of Bluegrass Chefs when we come back. Oh. Hi everybody, Kevin Harnett back with you here at Paris Town at our Kitchen Theater. It is a great day to be here in a historic part of Louisville that has come back to life with great food, shopping, and outdoor events like concerts and even ice skating in the wintertime. If you haven't been down here, you really should definitely come down and check it out. And of course, Kevin, Paris Town is home to our Secrets of Bluegrass Chef's Kitchen Theater where we're cooking Italian with Chef Alan all Harvard. Right, all right. And it's dessert time. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And what we have here, I have the, the cake. I just trimmed off the top so it'll balance out. Don't and throw that away, though. No, no. Oh. no this is for me. <laughs> that may be for y'all. That's, hey, that's my treat. And none like the top. And what, we, what I would like to do is we just take a knife and just go around and cut it in half. And just spin it. And we'd like to, once you cut it in half, we cut the half in half. It's like a magic trick over here. Wow, oh, yeah. it is. 
There you go. Just and once again in half, just take your knife and just and one important thing, Chef Trick, when you do this, you want to bake your cake a day before. You want to you don't want to try to do this, bake your cake and then an hour later, two hours later, try to cut it. If you cut it, it's gonna fall, fall apart. apart. So you want to like let it sit in the fridge, let it kind of come together, and then you can slice it. And the slice is really easy. You see, I'm just cutting half and half, like that. And then what I like to do, I start with the bottom half, like this, and we're gonna take a little, what I have right here, sweetened uh, cream cheese, just regular cream cheese, with, uh, what is it, powdered sugar and vanilla. Oh, nice. There you go. You see, I'm just spread around. Wow. And, and then we're gonna take the top layer, what I like to do is flip it. So that, oh. way, that way you get to the balance, you kind of press down a little bit. That's a secret, because that, now yeah, it's yeah, flat. Yeah, because yeah, if not, you have a lopsided cake. And what I have right here is raspberry jam. It's just basic raspberry jam. But what I do with it, I put like a little limoncello in it to kind of make it my own. You kind of give it like a little, a little, you need a little tartness to balance out the sweet. To me, you don't want it sweet, ah. sweet, 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 sweet. You need a little salty, a little spicy, a little something else to kind of counter or react the sweetness. See, now you just gave Tim an idea. He said right. instead of the limoncello, there you go. Yeah, be like bourbon. I like that. There you go. You see it like here? Boom. And we go to one more layer and press down a little bit. And then we're going to come with the. Oh, yeah. I've got to have another layer of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then we're going to coat it with this, too. And what I have here is just a nice offset spatula. Just spread it. Just spread it around. There you go. I'll spread it around. There you go. Like that. And then we're going to top it. The top of icing, frosting. <laughs> oh. Right here, you just come around. Oh, that covers everything yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, cover all your mistakes up. In right? sweet goodness. Yes, yes. You just come around. There you go. Normally, what I like to do once we get it at this point, I will put it in the fridge and let it kind of tighten up a little bit and come back with the secular. But for TV purposes, we're going to continue. <laughs> Then we want to top it with the uh, with the raspberry jam. Ah. Oh, and then once you cut it, you'll see what I'm talking about, where everything comes together. Like I said again, this is just raspberry jam with the limoncello. You can use blueberry jam. You can use any kind of jam. You can use chocolate, uh, chocolate ganache. You know what I'm saying, or whatever you like. There you go. Yeah, we're gonna just do this until. What I'm putting on here, I want enough to where you can see like spots where you don't see the cake. You should only see the glaze. There you go, people, and then we're going to slice this. And also what we do at the end, I'm going to slice some of this just to show you what it looks like in the side. It's like the big reveal. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah exactly. Oh, and that's the kind of, that's the we size need a drum of the roll. That's what I like. We need. <laughs> <laughs> oh, And there you go. Wow. Hey. Okay, and, and now and we got for the final touch, we have a little uh, raspberry uh, sauce. You mix actually little raspberries, strawberries, again with the limoncello to balance out the flavors. And we just puree everything together and strain it and get this wonderful sauce. So when you finish, there you go. That's the finishing touch. You make it touch. all look so easy, smooth. There you go. The raspberry cream cake. All for you, all for you. Hey, you get a cream cake, you get a cream cake, you get a cream cake. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right, all right. That's the benefit of coming down to uh, Kitchen Theater. You get a sample of everything the chefs make. That's true. We've got to say a big thank you to Alan Hubbard from Martini Italian hey. Bistro. Hey. Thank you. Hey, we thank appreciate you always being hey, a part of the show. Appreciate it. Hey, thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. Thank you. If you want to be a part of our studio audience, I think you'll find that these guys had a good time, and so could you. You'll find tickets at mintjuleptours.com. We'll say goodbye for now. We'll see you next time on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs.